What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 118 and I'm starting today's episode off by asking you one simple question. Why is Calvin Phillips in goal for Real Sociedad? Yep, so to start today's episode off on the back of the dramatic last minute winner from Gutierrez in Seville, how about this for a shocker? Real Sociedad have got club captain Calvin Phillips in goal, whilst Unai Simon is part of their back four. Uh, what? Yeah, I really don't know what to tell you. So, remember a few episodes ago when I said eight seasons into career mode, realism's gone out the window? Well, I didn't expect EA to take it this far. Yeah, clearly a massive bug. Former Leeds United midfielder Calvin Phillips is in goal for Real Sociedad at the Bernabeu. Yeah. So heading into the game, I was thinking, right, let's just get a couple of shots on target and a couple of easy goals because we should dominate pretty easily. But instead, Marco Bielsa, are you watching? Calvin Phillips made two great saves early, kept the score at 0-0, including a 1-1, -on -one, and then 20 minutes into the game, he denies for Torres from six yards. And I was thinking, what, what have I missed? Since when did Calvin Phillips become the best goalkeeper in Spain? It's still 0-0 and had three shots on target and he'd saved every single one of them. And I couldn't believe it. And half an hour in, still tied at 0-0. Thankfully, we would get in front. Yet, yeah, rolled the ball across the face of goal and Alberto, fourth goal in two. For the lad that was given to us for free by Wolverhampton Wanderers, makes it 1-0. You couldn't really blame the former Leeds midfielder for that one. We go our goal up and 34 minutes in, a chance to make it two. Fran Torres finds Ibanez, 20 yards from goal. And to be fair, once again, Calvin Phillips is clearly a great goalkeeper based on what we'd seen in the opening 20 minutes. But there was nothing he could do for these two goals. First a cut back and then a great strike from Rangers. Victor gets his first goal for his new club and makes it 2-0. So half time I was thinking we should be like five goals up. But Phillips is having a storm between the sticks. But I felt for sure we would win this game comfortably now. And 20 minutes after the restart we'd get our third. Yet running through Alberto rolls it across to Roberto for a little cut back there. Gutierrez is fifth of the season already after that game winner against Sevilla. Already a big moment in a Real Madrid jersey for the Uruguayan. This goal may be not as important, but it goes the third goal. I knew that would be fun. And then 66 minutes in, he returns the favor for Alberto. But no, Calvin Phillips once again with an extraordinary save. Keeps the 3-0, but there was nothing he could do about the rebound. Yeah, what a save by Phillips there, denying Alberto. And then it's Hurtado takes aim from range. The Mexican gets his first goal of the season. It's 4-0, Real Madrid. Nothing he could do about the long-range shots from Hurtado. And even as 4-0, and a chance to make it 5 with 18 minutes to go, Alberto running clear and just smashes it past Calvin. He says, I've had enough of your heroics in goal for Real Sociedad. I'm going to make it five. And I said this in the last episode and I'll say it once again. Bruno Lage, what were you thinking when you said, we'll give you Alberto for free? He's literally the exact type of player I wanted. <laughs> He's been brilliant start the season off, bracing this game. Hatchick on his Champions League debut. It's 5-0 Real Madrid. To Real Sociedad's credit though, whilst on the defensive end, they'll breach quite simply all game long. Richard Leeson did get him a goal back with 10 minutes to go to make it 5-1 and grab a consolation to Bernabeu. And then five minutes later, he sets up Florian Wirtz, who makes it 5-2. And I was thinking, Strenjak, he's been great since the season began. Game, but at this rate, I'd rather have Calvin Phillips in my goal. It's 5-2. Two quick ones from the visitors, but we were never in any danger of throwing away the points. We were leading by five with ten minutes to go. It wasn't going to happen. Calvin Phillips, quite simply, can't do it all. And he considered a sixth in stoppage time as well. Robbie running forward gets his brace as well. It's Real Madrid 6, Real Sociedad 2. But to be fair to the former Leeds midfielder, I can't really blame him for any of the goals. Yeah, he wasn't at fault for any of them, really. Perhaps the Hurtado strike, maybe. Could have done better with from the long-range strike there from the Mexican. But I think if you want to say that, you're probably nitpicking. Having said that, we took 14 shots in the game and only scored six against Calvin Phillips. I've got to say, I, I give props to the Leeds midfielder there. Caroga was my man in the match. But to be fair, Phillips playing in goal for Real Sociedad put in a pretty decent display. And you might be thinking, well, Doxy Boy clearly played him because there was no goalkeeper available. That's obviously not true. Radu was on the bench and Unai Simon was starting centre-back. So, yeah, just a really horrific bug from EA. It's so frustrating. I've got him because I got the win. I was delighted with it. 
I mean, it would have been pretty embarrassing had I not won that game by a few goals and scored at least three or four. So, yeah, 6 to the final score. But I have a question for you guys today. Has that happened to you in any of your saves so far? Because this is the first time it's ever happened to me in any save I've done. Now, there was a time in my FIFA 15 career mode where Blaise Matuidi went in goal for Liverpool. Uh, in an FA Cup final or Carabao Cup final, but that was after a goalkeeper got sent off during that game, which meant Matuidi had to go in goal. Um, but I've never had an outfield player start in goal for an AI club. I always assumed that was impossible. I didn't think you were able to do that, but clearly that rule does not apply to the AI. So question for you guys today, has that ever happened in any of your saves? In this year's FIFA or any other, please do let me know in the comment section down below because... It was truly bizarre, absolutely bizarre. Calvin Phillips starting in goal. And again, to be fair to him, despite shipping six, he didn't do too badly. Still, following the bizarre episode opener today, we then travelled to Russia for our first Champions League away day away against Spartak Moscow. I would win the game by two goals in it as well. Now, I didn't start Gutierrez for this game because he was gassed. He played every single minute to start the season off so far. I trusted we could do the job without Roberto, and we did as well. Ansu Fati in the first half, and then Valverde heading in a Fran Garcia cross got our second goal, which means we've got a great start to our Champions League campaign. Two wins from two, and I said it, you know, when the, the draw was made. I do put us as favourites to top this group, and that's the way it started as well. What I want to do is qualify the game or two to spare, and then rest everyone for match days five and match day six. Just because when the fixture congestion comes round in December, you want to make sure you've got the luxury of already qualifying. It started off that way, two wins in our opening two games. Having said that, Brentford haven't won a single one of their first two CL games, and Milan only won the group opener at the expense of Brentford. How interesting is that? I thought Milan and Brentford, the Super Cup finalists this year, Europa League and Champions League winners, would dominate that group, but Brentford, one point in two. Milan lost to Panathinaikos in their second group game. Well, I've got to say, I was expecting both of those to go through of these. Instead, a third of the way through, there's a genuine chance they both might get knocked out. That will be absolutely bizarre. Still, for the third game of today's episode, Osasuna away from home. And this is going to be a battle between the top two. Osasuna starting off this season, having a brilliant start to their La Liga campaign. Taking them on away from home here. I wanted to establish our dominance. We haven't been at our best in most of our games in La Liga so far. We've only had two big wins. One against Calvin Phillips' is in goal for Real Sociedad team. And then one against Levante as well. So in this game, I wanted to make a statement. We took lead early through Ferran Torres after a succession of great saves by the also soon a goalkeeper keeping it a nil nil until Ferran turned in what was I think our third rebound and after Gutierrez was denied he'd score from the following corner what a header from Roberto 28 minutes in we get ourselves two goals up and do you remember when we joined uh, when Gutierrez joined Milan with us back in season seven uh, sorry season, season, season seven season six I said if Roberto gets an aerial game he'll be the complete striker he scored quite a few more headers since he joined Milan, and there's his first of the season making it 2-0. So we're leading by two, and at half-time, I thought, let's keep our foot on the gas pedal, go for a third, and we get it four minutes after the restart as well. Ferran Torres scored our first, gets our third as well. Osasuna nil, Real Madrid free, and a big win there in a top-of-the-table clash. It's true, I haven't been at my best to start the season off with Real Madrid. Again, we've had a couple of big wins against Levante and Real Sociedad as well. That's our third in La Liga and a really important one as well because it inflicted the first defeat on Osasuna it means we go four points clear in La Liga as well and we're also the league's highest scorers as well with Valencia in second place. Real Sociedad have conceded 22 goals already. Lads, I think you know the reason why. Still, following that, our fixtures for October, as you can see, little international break for coming back with Real Batiste, Benfica both times this, uh, this month here away and then at home as well. And we do have Valencia this month too, which could be a crucial game. So at the moment, they're the team that look the strongest outside of us in La Liga. But for our first outside the international break, Real Batiste at home, aiming to keep our unbeaten start alive and get a big win here at the Bernabeu. And 25 minutes in, oh, what a replacement. This guy is looking for Dominic Nico Melamed. He scored that glorious chip against Barcelona in the El Clasico for his first in Real Madrid colours. Gets the opening goal of the game, latching onto that three ball and drilling at home. Dominic looked okay before we sold him but to me despite this guy being a rating lower I prefer him. Nico puts us in front in the game and we take the early lead. Having said that Real Batiste had a couple of golden chances. 
37 minutes in, they had a great opportunity. Streniak with a great save, but kept it at 1 0. And then 43 minutes in, we went up on the other end here. Trying to get ourselves a two goal, Christian. Fatty down the left hand side, stepping in field and finishing into the far corner as well. He's missed a couple of one on ones this season already, but for Fatty, I feel as though his pace is so electrifying. He's going to get at least one one on one chance a game. If he just converts 50% of them, I'll take it. He converted that one, he made it 2 0, and gave us the cushion and the breathing room. But despite that being the case, Real Batiste, to be fair, were pushing us and pushing us hard as well. That header from a corner, just over the bar, still 2 0, and it was 16 minutes to go, a chance to wrap the points up and kill the contest off. Oh, we almost did it in style as well. Roberto with a McGeady spin and the finish going just wide as it was still 2 0. But again, Batiste, we kept them sniffing around, and I thought at one point they might bite me. And with nine minutes to go after some pretty schoolboy defending, it must be said. A brilliant through ball released Robert. And his finish past Strenyak made it 2-1. Got them back in the game, half the deficit, but thankfully for us, it proved to be nothing other than a consolation goal. 2-1 to final score. We get the win, but once again, I'll say it, it was a really tough game. And to be fair to Batiste, if they took their chances, they would have just got a draw. They would have won this game. We scraped through with the three points of the Bernabeu against Real Batiste. And despite a great start to the season, winning eight of our first nine games and still being four points clear of Valencia. Guys, this has been a tough beginning. We've only dominated in three of our games. The O's have been real grind outs or a draw against Barcelona. There's a long way to go. We might be top, but I'm taking nothing for granted. But that will end this episode of Karima, guys. Massive thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, if you enjoyed this episode, please drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode, where I wonder if we'll see another outfield player in goal very soon.